Now that we've covered the basics of the normal and crosswind approach and landing, we're going to examine some of the specific procedures and requirements for the maneuver. As with all other maneuvers, there are certain criteria that you will be expected to meet for the end of course check ride. In order to prepare your airplane for landing, you will first need to complete the descent checklist prior to beginning your approach. This will ensure that the airplane is set up and will keep you from any extra distractions during your final approach. As you approach the airport, use either the traffic pattern procedure outlined earlier or the instructions given to you by ATC to position the airplane on downwind, approximately a half mile from the runway. Once established on the downwind, set the power to 2200 RPM and maintain 100 knots. Make power adjustments as required for the current conditions and trim the airplane as necessary. While you are established on downwind, select the point on the runway where you intend to land. This point could be a particular runway stripe or marking, or even the intersection of an adjacent taxiway. By selecting an aiming point, you will be able to better manage your descent and will ensure that you touch down with plenty of runway remaining. Once the airplane comes abeam your intended point of landing, reduce your power to 1500 RPM. Remember that as you do so, the nose of the airplane will want to drop with the loss of prop wash across the horizontal stabilizer. Add a little back pressure to the yoke to keep the airplane from descending too quickly and gaining speed. When your airspeed slows down below 110 knots, call out below 110, flaps 10, and set the flaps to 10 degrees. As the flaps move down, the nose will have a tendency to pitch up, so a little forward pressure on the elevator will be required to maintain your pitch attitude. Once the flaps are set, establish a descent at 80 knots. Place the top of the compass on the horizon as an initial visual reference. This should give you an approximate 1 degree nose down pitch attitude. When the point of intended landing is 45 degrees behind you, start your base turn and remember to correct your drift for the current wind conditions. Once established on the base leg, verify that the airspeed is at or just below 85 knots and call out 85 flaps 20. Set your flaps to 20 degrees and compensate for the tendency of the nose to pitch up as you add flaps. Lower your pitch attitude to approximately 3 degrees nose down and establish a 70 knot descent. Don't forget to retrim the airplane for the new configuration. Before you begin your turn to final, visually verify that the opposite base and final approach path are both clear of other traffic. Once you've cleared the area, it is safe to begin your turn to line up with the runway. Remember to adjust your roll rate based on the wind conditions. A tailwind on base will require a higher rate of roll than a headwind, so plan ahead and be careful not to under or overshoot your turn. When you have lined up the airplane on final, verify that the magnetic heading matches the intended runway and call out runway and runway number verified. For example, if you are intending to land on runway 23, the callout would be runway 23 verified. Once you have verified the runway and a safe landing is assured, make sure that your airspeed is below 85 knots and call out below 85 flaps 30. Set the flaps to 30 degrees and maintain the same pitch attitude as before. Establish the airplane in a 65 knot descent plus half the gust factor if necessary. Retrim the airplane for your new configuration. Now that the airplane is configured and at your final approach speed, you can make your final corrections to ensure that you will land on your aiming point. At this position, your aiming point should appear not to be moving up or down on the windscreen. If the point is moving down in your field of vision, you are too high and should reduce your power and lower your nose to re-establish the airplane on the proper glide path. If the point appears to be moving up on the windscreen, the airplane is too low. You will need to add power and raise the pitch slightly to adjust so that you will land on the intended point on the runway. Small adjustments like these may be necessary all the way down final, depending on the wind conditions. Prior to descending through 300 feet above field elevation, complete the descent final items flow to make sure that the airplane is fully configured for landing. At 200 feet, if the airplane is in a stabilized approach, meaning that you are on speed, configured, and on glide path, call out 200 feet stabilized continuing. 
If for any reason the approach is not stabilized, call out 200 feet, not stabilized, going around, and execute a go around. Remember that you are never committed to landing. You can always go around and try again. If you are landing with a crosswind, you need to establish the airplane in a wing low side slip to compensate for the wind drift. The amount of control deflection will vary with the strength of the wind and may change as you approach the runway. So keep your eyes outside and don't be afraid to make corrections during your descent. In a wing low side slip, you will use the ailerons to lower the upwind wing into the wind to stop the sideways drift of the airplane. Without this input, the airplane would be pushed with the wind away from the center line of the runway. As you establish your drift correction, the nose of the airplane will be turned into the wind. You will have to apply opposite rudder to keep the longitudinal axis of the airplane aligned with the center line of the runway. If you were to touch down without these corrections, you would sideload the wheels and potentially lose directional control on the runway. Remember that the stronger the wind, the greater the input must be. As you come over the threshold of the runway, keep your eyes outside and focus your attention on the end of the runway in the distance instead of your aiming point. This will help you maintain directional control and give you the perfect visual reference for the flare pitch attitude. Begin your round out by reducing your power to idle. Now remember that as you reduce the power, you will lose the downwash over the elevator, so you will have to increase back pressure on the yoke to keep the nose from dropping. Continue slowly increasing the back pressure and raising the nose and the flare until the main wheels touch down. You should be just above stall speed at minimum controllable airspeed when you touch down, and the pitch attitude will be similar to that of the power off stall. Continue to hold the back pressure on the yoke to keep the nose wheel off the ground and maximize aerodynamic braking as the airplane slows down through the rollout. If you are touching down with a crosswind, maintain the wing low side slip and touch down on the upwind wheel first. As the airspeed decreases, you will have to increase the aileron input into the wind as the opposite main touches down naturally. Continue increasing the aileron deflection until the yoke is pointed fully into the wind, and just like touching down with a headwind, keep increasing the back pressure on the yoke to keep the nose wheel from touching down until it settles gently on its own. Maintain directional control throughout the rollout and maximize aerodynamic braking by keeping the back pressure on the yoke. As you approach your exit from the runway, Smoothly apply the brakes and slow just enough to safely make the turn and exit the runway. Once you have cleared the hold short line with the entire airplane, bring the aircraft to a stop and complete the after-landing checklist.